I am in Lake Tahoe and I need to get some food for my family for a couple of weeks and I follow a ketogenic lifestyle. So let's head on into Whole Foods. Let's do a little bit of an educational haul and I'll show you what I'm gonna get for my family to last at least a couple of weeks. So we'll find some new stuff, we'll find some old stuff, we'll talk through it and you'll learn a little bit. Let's head on in to Whole Foods. Whenever possible, start with the produce first. Honestly, blow your budget on the produce, on the meat, before you hit those middle aisles. And I know I sound like a broken record when I say that, but it's just grocery 101. If you hit the produce and you hit the meat first, you'll at least spend your budget on the stuff that's going to get you the most bang for the buck as far as your overall body composition and how you feel is concerned. So let's see what we got here. Now, I am all about convenience. So we have to look at the big picture here. Let's see if there's anything. A lot of times I like to find, oh, arugula. This is one of the best keto greens that you can have. Okay. If I were to have arugula instead of spinach, then I'm getting a lot more of the nutrients, but spinach also is going to end up having a lot of what are called oxalates in there. So unless you are cooking spinach, you don't really want to have it in salads. But I love arugula. It tastes good in a salad. You could also put it in eggs. It gives a nice little uh, you know, zesty taste to it. So that's perfect there. You know what a funny one is that people don't really think about a lot? is jicama. Now, I'm gonna see if I can find some jicama sticks. It might make a little more sense, but jicama is super rich in what is called inulin. It is a perfect keto crunchy snack. So if you have salsa, if you have guacamole, use jicama, have some fun with it. This is actually a really good price. It's $1.99 a pound in California prices. That's not bad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a fresh one. And then if I find some sticks later, then I'll go ahead and put this back. Well, what do you know? I already found some jicama sticks and they're on sale for $2.69. That's chili lime. Ooh, these are flavored. What's on these? Let's see, we have Jicama, chili lime, sea salt, citric acid, sodium citrate, citrate, uh, dehydrated red bell pepper, crystallized lime. There's nothing bad in here. I mean, there's a little bit of silicone dioxide to prevent some caking and stuff, but that's fine. I'm gonna get this. I'm actually gonna get this, and I'm gonna get the fresh jicama. Why not? Ah, and here's what I do when I go for Brussels sprouts. If, if you get Brussels sprouts in a bag, Depending on, the, you may or may not want to do this. Okay, they do usually come in like a microwavable bag. Now, if you're on the go, that can work out really well. I understand plastics, BPAs, estrogen, all that, I get it. Uh, but I will say, for ease of cooking, getting the shaved mode is a lot better, right? If you get them in a shaved form, then you can just throw them in a pan, they're gonna cook up a lot faster. Whereas if you were to get them, let me just grab those, if you were to get them in this full form, you have to really cook them a lot. Okay, you have to either boil them, you have to saute them for a while, you have to roast them. If you have an air fryer, that works really well. But I love just getting the shaved ones because you would add a little bit of bacon to these and throw them in an air fryer or just add some bacon, throw them in a saucepan, throw them in a cast iron and just very minimal time. But also it's a very good cruciferous vegetable, which is tremendous when you're on keto because it also not only has sulforaphane, which is a powerful flavor and powerful antioxidant, but also just going to be really rich in what is called methane, which is good for modulating estrogen anyway. So for both men and women, just awesome produce finds. Again, if I was stocking up for the month, I would get a lot more in this. I'm just trying to showcase what I'm getting here. You know, here's another quick snack that you can have in the produce section, bean sprouts totally keto friendly, totally easy, and they're crunchy. Again, one of the things when you're doing keto is you miss that crunch, okay? And sometimes you get that crunch from things like jicama. You can't really have carrots on keto because they're too high in carbs, but bean sprouts, they're practically, practically a null and void food. I mean, they practically have nothing to them. So just a great, easy crunch. Okay, so here's some cool stuff. Raspberries, believe it or not, will be okay on keto. Just have about a quarter to a half a cup of them. The nice thing about raspberries, they're already a low carb fruit but they also have specific tannins in them. And these tannins make it so that you do not absorb as much of the carbohydrates from it. So I did a whole separate video on that. Whoops, a whole separate video explained how the tannins literally inhibit glucose absorption. That is such a powerful thing. You know what's funny is they have like whipped cream here. If you didn't add the sugar to it, whipped cream would be perfect to have on keto, right? You could go ahead and you could take some of those raspberries, a quarter cup of them, put them with a couple tablespoons of heavy whip, and boom, you're in good shape. Blackberries are a close second. Blueberries are great too, especially because they have those anthocyanins in there, which are really good for the brain. But I'm sticking with the raspberries today. Plus my son loves them. Now we get into just about my favorite, I guess it's a fruit, avocado. Okay, one of the best keto foods that you could possibly have. Okay, rich in what is called oleic acid. This is one of the most powerful fat burning foods that you can eat on keto because oleic acid converts to oleolethylamine. And what that does is plays a powerful role in the brown fat activation. Brown fat is the fat that is on our body that actually dissipates calories as heat. So not only does it activate that brown fat, making it more heated, 
but it also helps what is called the beijing of white fat. So it helps white fat turn to brown fat. So not only do you end up with more brown fat, you end up with more of that brown fat being activated. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Now let's see if we can find a good avocado here. A lot of these are really like overripe. I'm just gonna get two of them here. Onions, okay, so onions are a tremendous prebiotic fiber. And when you're on keto, sometimes you miss out on the important fibers. And one of the things I would recommend is getting those prebiotic fibers so it helps support your existing gut bacteria. So onions are perfect for that. They might be a little sweet though. So one of the things you might wanna consider using is shallots instead. Shallots are gonna be a lower sugar content. In fact, they're like one third the sugar content of onions and they pack a powerful punch when it comes to flavor. So that's just a fun fact. I don't even see them here, but I saw the onions that made me think of it. Okay, meat. We all love meat. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I get. I love getting wild sockeye salmon. Okay, now I'm gonna get this in the smoked version first because this is what I would have like along with my breakfast if I was making like a Mediterranean style breakfast. Do not get the Norwegian, go for the sockeye. It's going to be richer in the uh, astaxanthin, which is a higher quality uh, antioxidant that's already naturally existing within the salmon. So I'll show you. See, in this case, see how it's really dark red? We want that dark red salmon. That's exactly what we're after. Uh, this one's got some pepper and stuff on it. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, let's see, I don't need a bunch of it, but that's a better deal here. Let's see, $16.99, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to get a smaller one. I am going to get the one with the pepper on it. Ooh, cold smoked sake. This one's a little bit cheaper. Yeah, let's go with this one. You look at these ingredients. That's what you want. Smoked sake, salmon, and salt. Nothing else to it. Now remember, I'm not just shopping for myself here. Okay, we have an air fryer. I love using my air fryer, and bacon is one of the best things that you can use in an air fryer. One of the things that I really like, I love this Applegate Organics. They have some really good stuff. Let me show you the label on this. Okay, actually I found the no sugar added one too, but this one has organic pork, which is actually pretty rare to find organic pork. Water, sea salt, and then a little bit of cane sugar, celery powder. But check this out. They now have a no sugar one. That is really wicked cool, because this was just organic pork, water, sea salt, and celery powder. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. It's a little bit expensive at $7.99, but considering that there's no preservatives, no nitrites, no nitrates, really just no sodium benzoates, no sodium phosphates, no nothing. It's just good, clean, simple stuff. So I'm going to grab that. Uh, we don't eat bacon a ton, but usually what we'll do is we'll mix it up with our Brussels sprouts like that, put that in the air fryer, and that's delicious. Now, like I said, we have kids in the house. They like hot dogs, but I'm not gonna feed them most hot dogs. Now, once again, it comes back down to these Applegate ones. I see chicken hot dogs, turkey hot dogs, and beef hot dogs. In this case, I'm going with the beef hot dogs. Okay, turkey is always questionable. Chicken, you have to know what you're looking for. Beef, if it's good grass-fed, grass-finished, or at least relatively good with no antibiotics and stuff, it's a pass. It's, it seems like passing, like it's been passed my test, not pass in general. Uh, let me show you what's in this one. Okay, so in this case, I have grass-fed beef, and dehydrated garlic, some onion, paprika, celery powder. I mean, we're talking clean. So my kids love hot dogs. I don't feel bad about giving them this stuff. They're not on keto, but I am, and I might sneak a hot dog or two. It's funny, because even the Whole Foods brand, like the 365 Organic, the uncured grass-fed beef hot dogs, even this has potassium lactate in it, which is still a preservative. I don't really want that in there. So it's got extra stuff that the Applegate one doesn't have. So it's worth paying the extra dollar for the Applegate. You know, I could spend a ton of time here in the meat section. Really, I could. Um, I usually like to get some chorizo, some kielbasa sausage so that I have a little bit of flavor to add to things. So a lot of times if I'm making vegetables, one of the ways is that I really like make, to make vegetables delicious is by adding some extra meats to them. So I'll add some chorizo to it, which is totally keto friendly if you're looking for the right stuff. So there's one here. Let's see. Yeah, the Spanish brand chorizo, the Silva brand, looks like this. Now let me show you the back of it. Pork. Remember, pork is a good quality fat. It's got more monounsaturated fats in there. Okay, so we've got pork, paprika, salt, celery juice powder, spices, dextrose. Uh, sugar and a starter culture. The starter culture works along with the dextrose, just so you know. The sugar content is very low. Okay, we're talking two ounces has two grams of carbs, one gram of fiber, so that means by default, we're looking at one gram of sugar. Okay, so look at that again. Two grams of carbs, one gram of fiber, and we know sugar's in it, so that means by default, that extra one gram is sugar. I'm not worried about it. That's a good price Six on sale too, $4.49 for this chorizo. Definitely getting that. Cook that up with some other veggies, with that arugula, ooh, that sounds so good. Now this brand I've talked about in Costco hauls, and I'm probably gonna stock up on a few of these because again, I'm a busy dad. Okay, right now I'm up in Tahoe, I'm with the family all the time, so I'm always up and on the go, right? It is difficult to sit down and cook a meal all the time when you're on the go. This Kevin's brand stuff is really cool. Okay, I'll show you what's up. It looks like this, but look at it, like lemongrass, paleo lemongrass chicken. Look at this. Okay, the ingredients in this, boneless chicken, uh, boneless skinless chicken, 
water, sea salt, lemon juice, yeast extract, citrus extract, granulated, no preservatives. And the sauce is coconut milk, water, coconut aminos, which has coconut nectar, water, sea salt, a little bit of coconut sugar, ginger, basil, tapioca, starch. I mean, we're talking very simple. And look at that, monk fruit as the sweetener. So my personal favorite, I love the lemongrass one. That one's really good. I'm going to get that. They are 10 bucks. They're a little bit expensive, but the Thai style coconut chicken is delicious. And I haven't tried the roasted garlic chicken. Let me see how many carbs are in this one. Ooh, that's a low carb one. Three grams of carbs. I'm getting that. So I know these are expensive and I don't expect everyone to get these. Uh, but this is something that it makes a nice dish. This will feed four of us. So 10 bucks and it's going to feed a family of four. So I'm totally down for that. The cool thing is Whole Foods now has some good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat. In fact, I just found this 100% grass-fed, grass-finished Panorama brand, $7.49. This one's 85% lean. Ooh, check this out. This is rare. This is really rare. Just found this one is 93% lean, 7% fat, 100% grass-fed, grass-finished. Looks like this. It is $8.49, but to get it that lean and grass-fed, grass-finished is not easy to find. That's not easy to come by. Okay. Usually the grass-fed, grass-finished, they don't, there isn't a demand for the lean stuff. People that want grass-fed, grass-finished usually want the fat content. At the end of the day, the fat is still fat and it still adds up in calories. So don't fool yourself. If you're doing keto, fat is important for sure, but you don't need to add extra fat just for the sake of adding fat. You're better off still going relatively lean and then getting your fats in just naturally, not by adding them in. So I'm going to just get a couple of these. I'm going to get two of them. Actually, forget that. I'm going to get three. I really like this stuff. And the fact that they have it lean, that's perfect. Then we're getting into the ground chicken and stuff. So with this, I love going for the ground chicken breast. Uh, I still go for the regular ground chicken. I would prefer ground chicken over ground turkey. Ground turkey has usually a lot more antibiotics in it. Uh, ground chicken. Chicken is a little bit cleaner, if you ask me. Uh, in this case, this is organic chicken, organic rosemary extract that they are using as a preservative, which I think is nice and clean. But also $7.99 a pound in California is not that bad. Like I'm totally gonna dig that. So we use this in stir fry. We make like a ground chicken stir fry, all kinds of stuff like that. Works really, really well. So I'm gonna get a few of those because that's really what we live on a lot of. Now what's kind of funny is I don't eat a lot of chicken thighs. Now I will get chicken wings from time to time and put them in the air fryer, but I usually don't like to eat a bunch of the skin and stuff. I usually will get some chicken breasts and call it a day. I mean, that's really good stuff. Now, I know we swung by the store and got some chicken breasts when we got into town, so I'm only gonna get one, uh, but normally I'd probably get two or three of these to you know feed the family for a little while. Okay, looks like we're looking pretty good in the meat department here. Let's go ahead and let's hit some of this other stuff. Now, my wife is not the biggest fan of fish in the world, so a lot of times if I'm cooking fish, I'm gonna end up grilling it myself. Um, their fish is good quality here for the most part, but it's pretty pricey still. And a lot of it, I still try to avoid the farm raised stuff, uh, but you have to look at stuff like halibut and things like that. It, it all depends on the season, right? So here's, here's one, fresh wild caught king salmon, but it is $29.99 a pound. Bang for the buck, that's just not realistic. That's something that maybe I'll have if I'm going to have a special occasion or something like that. Usually I end up just getting that through a different source or I'll even get it frozen where I don't have to worry about it as much. Okay, coffee is super, super important here. So we've got a couple of different things that we can look for. Usually I recommend going with a lighter roast, slightly higher caffeine content, a little less acidic. So then that ends up working to your advantage. Um, there's still a lot of selection here. I'll tell you what I typically do and you know, take it or leave it. Since the selection here is really just a lot of the same thing, just in a different label, I usually use something called Jot Coffee. Check this out. So Jot Coffee is a liquid concentrate that is 20 times more powerful than regular coffee. So you just take a tablespoon and you add it into whatever you want. So you can add it directly to almond milk and make a latte. Add it directly to heavy cream and make a breve latte. You can add it directly to water and make cold brew, hot water and make coffee. I'm not kidding, it is the easiest thing in the world. So they are a sponsor and a supporter of this channel. So I put a link down below and that way you can save 20% off your first order, but also save 50% off of the subscription. So I'm, I'm not kidding, this stuff is amazing. It's so unbelievably cool. So we usually just bring a bottle with us, put it in my suitcase, whatever, uh, wherever I'm traveling, if I'm on the road, and I just bring it with me, or I just have them change my subscription to mail it to where I'm going. So definitely wanna check out Jot, J-O-T. So use that link down below in the description and you can save 20%. It's, out of all the things I talk about, this is probably the one where people come up to me the most and say, wow, okay, that is seriously awesome. Oh, these are really cool too. Um, Four Sigmatic has cool coffee, but I really just like their straight up elixirs, like straight up 
Lion's Mane Elixirs. So if you're at a Whole Foods and you're just looking for a little mental boost, I recommend that too. I've got a good supply of that. Okay, tea. I usually grab some tea, uh, let's see here. There's a few different things that I might choose. Yes, I usually get this nighty night one. This is just a peek into Thomas DeLauer's life. So this is passionflower herb, chamomile, linen, catnip, because I like to be crazy like a cat. Anyway, really good stuff there. So I always grab one of those when I'm traveling. Look at this, this is a good looking cart right now. What about nut butters and things like that? Okay, the thing with almond butter, again, it's very easy to overdo it. So we wanna kinda of look and pick and choose accordingly. Nut butters at Whole Foods are pretty expensive. So I don't necessarily recommend stocking up on those. Now, if you're trying to uh, just get through life and get through a trip, sure. But I think if I was to stock up on anything here, knowing that the kids do like their you know, sandwiches and things like that, I'm probably not gonna get peanut butter because that's not the best keto butter. Almond butter's a little bit overdone. But I might try something like, let's see, in this case, let's take a look. Okay, so peanut butter, we get ourselves in the same situation. Sunflower seed butter, a very similar omega-3 profile, which means it's just the incorrect ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 that we really want on keto. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but tr using tahini on a sandwich actually tastes really good if kiddos like it. But if you're looking for a good healthy fat to use in place of almond butter, tahini is a very good choice. And look at 639 for this big old tub of it. All it is is sesame seeds. So you're getting a really good fatty acid profile. You're also getting powerful antioxidants like sesame and sesamolin that come out of that. They do have this nutso keto butter, which is awesome. So it's almonds, coconuts, Brazil nuts, pecans, macadamia nuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, and Celtic sea salt. But it's also 11 bucks for this little thing. Um, I like that it doesn't have cashews though. That is actually pretty cool. Almonds, coconut, Brazil, pecans, macadamia, flax, chia. I'm gonna get some of that. I know it's expensive, but I wanna try it. So a little bit of R&D here. So I'm not necessarily saying everyone needs to go out and get it, but I like that blend of nuts in there. If you've tried it, let me know in the comments. That sounds kind of cool. Okay, there's a good chance we'd be doing some baking. So let's see, they've got some stevia. They've got erythritol and monk fruit, which is basically the same as Lakanto, but a little bit cheaper. You know, for baking and things like that, erythritol and monk fruit's totally good to go. Uh, so $12.99 for this. Again, I'm kind of stocking up the house a little bit. We'll probably do some baking. I don't know if I need a giant one like this, but I'm going to go ahead. Actually, here we go. Here's a 365. What is in this? This is just straight erythritol. I'd rather have erythritol and monk fruit. So here we go. We're going to grab this guy. So get one of those. Now remember, erythritol is still a sugar alcohol, which means it's still going to potentially disrupt your gut a little bit. You might still feel a little bit of that passive diffusion where you have some of that, uh, basically it draws water into your colon and gives you those tummy gurgles a little bit. A little bit's usually not gonna bother you, but if you start overdoing it, you're not used to it, yes, you can definitely experience some discomfort. So just be aware of that. But most erythritol, you actually urinate out, believe it or not, it's pretty wild. Okay, occasionally you just have to get some things that are fun, some things, and I saw this Keto & Company vanilla, uh, vanilla keto cake mix might we actually have some friends coming up it's going to be someone's birthday so like maybe we'll make a keto friendly cake that's kind of cool let's check out what's in it okay so it's a little pricey 11 bucks let's see we've got wondrous sugar replacer so erythritol non-soluble corn fiber inulin fruit let's see coconut flour natural flavors yeah i don't like the natural flavors because i don't know this company yet but monk fruit that's all good soluble corn fiber is actually okay too you always want to look for non-gmo soluble corn fiber Okay, if it's just regular soluble corn fiber, it's gonna have all the negative properties of corn in it. Now, there's not a lot in that package, and that's pretty spendy, so I'm not gonna get that. Ah, see, here's what's interesting. Okay, when I was, what I was looking for earlier in the nut butter section was coconut butter. It is like peanut butter of the tropics, is what we always joke and call it. It is so delicious. My kids love it when you make sandwiches with it. It is so unbelievably good, and look at the macronutrients on it. Four grams of carbs, three grams of fiber. So you got one gram of net carbs, it's a little bit expensive, but it is so good. Now, I have a lot of that at the house. I just wanted to show you that. I have, you know, Thrive always sends me a bunch of it, just I never like to run out of it. But I just wanted to show that. Now, one thing I do need, I do need some avocado oil spray. This is great stuff because avocado oil has a high smoke point. So when you're cooking on keto, you always want to get some avocado oil. Okay, and I love getting that spray. And then we have ghee, which I know I could use some. Let's see if there's any good deals going on here. It doesn't look like it. Um, one of the things I do like, let's see, vanilla bean, turmeric, Himalayan pink salt. So it's a little pricey here. I'm probably going to end up getting that online to save some money. But ghee is a very good keto fat. In fact, it converts to ketones very, very fast because it's a very short chain fatty acid. It's a very short chain fat and a very good fat. Basically, it's butter fat that has none of the milk solids. So you're getting all the fat out of it with really no, 
none of the actual dairy. It's pretty cool. Always get some of these Koya drinks just because they are awesome. These guys, I'll show you. Just good on the go, little keto drinks. I like the cake batter, the cookies and cream ones are super awesome. These are a little bit more of a novelty thing for me if I'm on the go, so not required that you get them. Eggs, now I know I've talked about this a lot. I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. You always wanna get organic pasture raised or at least pasture raised. Skip the cage free, skip the free range. Okay, you want pasture raised. Free range is sort of, uh, they play on the words a little bit. And if you can get organic pasture raised, even better. Because that means pasture raised where they're really out on an open pasture, but they're also when they are still fed soy, because inevitably they're going to be fed soy. It's just the way it is unless you get them locally sourced. When they're fed soy, at least it's organic soy and not the GMO garbage. Now let me show you all the different things they have here. Omega-3 rich eggs don't mean anything because omega-3 content in eggs is so low to begin with, it's negligible. And it's also alpha linoleic acid, which is not exactly an omega-3 that your body can use. It's one that has to convert into a usable form. And the conversion rate, let's say you had 100 milligrams of omega-3s. In this case, there's 300 milligrams. The conversion rate is about 1%. So you're looking at getting three to four actual grams of omega-3s that's actually gonna work in your body. Not worth the extra money to get that omega-3 label. So you always wanna go for pasture raised. So here's regular pasture raised, here's non-GMO pasture raised, here's organic pasture raised, and here's a different organic pasture raised. I don't know what the difference is between these two, I think. But man, this is a crazy cheap price. 584 for these, definitely going to get these. I know Vital Farms is good stuff, so I'm rolling with that one. Now, each Whole Foods is going to have different options for their eggs, because a lot of times they get relatively local ones. These Pete and Jerry ones are pretty decent too. Uh, Clover, I think, is not exactly great, so don't go for that one. But Vital is always a good to go. Now, instead of getting half and half to use in your coffee, just get heavy cream, okay? At least with heavy cream, you are not having uh, any of the milk sugars at all. You're just getting straight up the heavy cream, lower carb content, and you're not going to have the lactose. Or you're still gonna have lactose, but not as much. So the thinner that it is, the more of the actual milk sugar and things like lactose that there are. The thicker that it is, the better. So put a dash of heavy cream in your coffee instead of half and half. It makes a big difference. All right, then let's talk butter really quick. Uh, now, as far as flavor is concerned, I'm usually a Vital Farms fan, but I don't see it. Um, I see Kerrygold, which is great. I'm usually just more of a Vital Farms fan. I just like the flavor a little bit better. They're both grass-fed, grass-finished. Um, so in this case, we go through it quite a bit. I'm going to get two regular salted Kerrygolds. Look at this keto haul. It's looking pretty good. Here's something that's super important. Okay, cottage cheese is not all created equal. Okay, cottage cheese is very important that you get the right ones. So with cottage cheese, it's a case in protein, and a lot of times they will have lower quality proteins in them. They will have lower quality... Well, I shouldn't say they have lower quality proteins. It is a lower quality protein because of the kind of dairy that it is. So always want to go for one that's made from grass-fed cows, which in this case... Uh, I want you to check out Good Culture. Check this out. Okay. This is really cool. Look at it. Double cream classic. Always look for the green one. 6% milk fat. So it's a little bit higher fat, but it tastes so, so good. And look at these ingredients. Uh, where'd they go? Well, here's the main shout outs. Live and active cultures, high protein, thick creamy, Celtic sea salt, no carotene, no preservatives, no hormones. Um, there we go. Skim milk, whole milk, organic cream, salt, live and active cultures. That is it. You're not gonna find whole, you know, cottage cheese that usually is like that. I am the weird guy that likes canned fish. In fact, I had a can of tuna before I came in here. Now, let me show you what you wanna look for. Usually, I recommend going for tuna in water, okay? Because that way you can add your fats to it. You don't have to trust the kind of oil that is in it. So a lot of times if they say it's with olive oil, it's gonna be lower quality oil. There are a few brands that I know are good quality. For example, uh, here we go, Wild Planet, here. So Wild Planet, you're totally okay. Like in this case, I know they're using good quality extra virgin olive oil. You know, some of this stuff, you just have to do your own research as to where they're sourcing their olive oil and everything like that. Um, this pole line is another good one. It's another one, see it's got olive oil. I do think that this is a little bit higher quality extra virgin olive oil in this case. Uh, in this case, try going for the, ooh, here's the problem. See, the albacore is a higher mercury content. So I would prefer, or I don't think they have the chunk light in the oil. They have, ooh, that's a problem. Dang it. So they have the albacore in the oil, but they don't have the chunk light in the oil. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get a couple of these. I'm still gonna, whoop, dropping them. I'm gonna get a couple of these albacores in oil, just because they're still good. I just don't wanna eat it all the time. If you're eating it regularly, you're gonna wanna go with the chunk light for sure, less mercury. But one thing I will say about 
Wild Planet is they are really good on third-party Mercury testing. So even with the albacore, they still test it. All right, let's grab some other stuff. Also, ooh, always good to get some sardines. This is like one of the most omega-3 rich foods that you could possibly get. I'm just gonna get one. I actually got some at Costco, so I'm good on that, but I just wanna get one just for the principle of this haul. There's a bunch of other canned fish we could get, but I'm just showing you a basic idea and what to look for. You know, one of the quickest and easiest things that you can make with the family when you're doing keto that still works for everybody is going to be make the family whatever kind of spaghetti pasta they want, but then you can still have the bolognese and still have all the good stuff. So you end up getting some really good marinara, good tomato sauce, whatever. Cook up some of that ground beef I picked up earlier, mix that all in. Bazinga, you've got bolognese that's perfect keto friendly and the whole family's happy. Plus you could also put it over some shirataki noodles, you could put it over some spaghetti squash, you could put it over some natural heaven pasta, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. I'll show you what I mean. There we go. This is the one I usually go for. A little bit pricier, but Victoria's brand, marinara. Look at this, tomatoes, onions, avocado oil, salt, garlic, basil, and spices. It is just worth the extra money to get something really that clean. If you do look carefully, you can find some good stuff though. Let's see what else we can find. What about the, like the 365 organic? Look at that. Yeah, like this one doesn't have any sugar added to it. It does have olive oil, but you know, so I'll get one of those. Like that's two thirty. You know what? I mean, that was seven ninety nine. I gotta save some money here. Okay, this doesn't have sugar added. It's got olive oil instead of avocado oil. This Victoria brand is great, but Costco's got a better deal. Get that at Costco. Save the money. That's expensive here. I'm going for one that's two thirty nine. Let's be real here. Okay, and speaking of the pasta, okay, I'm now right next to all the pasta in the Asian section. Check out this miracle rice. Miracle noodles. This one's a rice one. Do they actually have the noodles? So shirataki noodles. I don't see them. Oh, that's a bummer. So they have the rice. I'm sure they have them somewhere. It's so basically they're, they usually make this miracle rice in like a miracle noodle. It's just cognac root. So it's, uh, it's shirataki noodles. Basically they are a zero calorie and zero carb form of noodles because it's a specific root that has like no, really no nutritional value either. It's just something called glucomannan fiber, which holds so much water. Once it enters your system, it just sucks up water and it just acts as a fiber that doesn't ever really absorb. But you get the effect of noodles. I don't see it here, which is very odd. Maybe it's just because I'm in Tahoe and it's not like a full spectrum Whole Foods. Anyway, let's keep going. This is just a little guilty pleasure of mine. I'm gonna grab a couple of those coconut butter keto cups. Not a ton of stuff here in the snack aisle. I try to not load up here unless I'm like really needing to, but I'm seeing, let's see here. Oh yeah, always need some chicharrones, always need some pork rinds. I'm a big 4505 guy, love the jalapeno pork rinds. Now these are good because the first ingredient is pork, which is what you would expect. But the thing is, there's no added antibiotics and no added hormones. Okay, so very important to pay attention to that because pork rinds, the primary constituent is pork. So the most important thing that you can pay attention to is the pork that's in it, okay? Um, now there's some other new things here I wanna check out. Now I always like the oven baked pork rinds too. These are a little bit lower fat content, so they're a little bit less calories, but I see some new stuff here. Like what are these chili lime verde pork? 100% pork and tapioca starch. Oh, the carb content's way too high. So it's got pork, then tapioca starch. Ooh, high oleic sunflower oil, nope. Compare that to my 4505. Uh, they cook it in rendered pork fat. They're just using, you know, snout to tail, exactly the way it should be. Here's an interesting thing. It may seem like they're not keto friendly, but if you had a little bit of some plantains, I know there's 21 grams of carbs in it, but a small amount, like a small handful, is actually one of the best things that you can do for your gut. Green banana flour and plantains are so good for prebiotic fiber. So even a small amount of that would be okay. Just don't go overboard. Don't have them as like a snack. Have them almost as a supplement. Now, normally I'd stock up on a bunch of cold brew and stuff too. But in this particular case, it just makes way more sense for me to use my jot. So like how much money I'd spend again on like cold brew, it just, I, I'll spend a small amount of money on a 20X concentrate that gives me 20 servings. And then I would have ended up spending three times as much getting cold brew here. So just doesn't make a lot of sense for me. Just using my jot just makes way more sense when I'm on the road. Also needed to grab some almond milk. Again, always make sure you grab the unsweetened. This is just great for protein shakes or for baking or whatever, super easy. Ah, my favorite, the cheese. I'm such a cheese fan. Goat cheese all the way. 
Okay, you've seen this in my other videos. So the thing with goat cheese is it has MCT oil in it. So it therefore makes it one of the most ketogenic cheeses that you could have. Okay, this stuff is good to go. So a cool thing, goat cheese also is going to be a different protein. It's not the A1 casein protein, it's the A2 casein protein, which is less damaging within the body. So there's a lot of evidence showing that A1 casein coming from more modern cow milk is not exactly the best. So if you go for the goat milk, well then you're a lot better off. Now it's hard to find like goat cream and stuff, but you can usually find good quality goat cheese. This is the slices, so if I wanted to make like a wrap or something like that, I'd be good to go. But otherwise you can get higher quality goat cheese in like the tubes and the spreadable kind and all that. Different story, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it today. I just wanna get the basics. Ooh, and then I'm such a big fan of like dry cured hams and things like this. These uncured meats are totally cool on keto. Now, it can get a little bit expensive. Like, look at this, sliced prosciutto is $20.99, but that's a big chunk of prosciutto. But look at the ingredients in it. Pork and sea salt. Do they have a smaller one? Here's some ham, here's, let's see. Yeah, pork, sea salt, and paprika. That looks pretty good. Dry cured ham, basically the same, almost the same as prosciutto. I'm gonna try some of that this time. That looks really good. Mix that with a little bit of goat cheese. Roll these two things up. Maybe a little bit of jicama to give it a crunch. Ooh, so good. Also, don't forget about olives, right? Olives are a tremendous keto snack. You're getting your vitamin D in, you're getting your good healthy fats. Remember, olive oil comes from olives. And if you're using the olives, well, if you're using the actual olive, then you're getting the most potent part of the antioxidant, not just the stuff that's coming through the oil. You're actually getting the antioxidants that are in the olive itself, the hydroxytyrosol, the different flavonoids that you want to be powerful. Those antioxidants, I mean, that's where there's a lot of evidence when it comes down to uh, different cholesterol levels, everything like that. There's a lot of evidence that the antioxidants are playing the role, not just the fact that it's a good quality monounsaturated fat. A very stable fat that you can cook with at low temperature that you could use, but at the end of the day, if you're eating the olive, you're getting everything. You're getting all the nutrients, plus you're getting some good fiber too. Here we're into the little bit of the frozen section. There's some really good stuff here, but I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit minimal on the frozen for now. Except I did find one thing that I gotta try. I've heard that this is really good. It is not keto, it's expensive, but I've heard it's delicious. And I am up for a cheat meal here pretty soon and I would really like to try this. Gluten-free pasta, okay, it's a cheat meal. But anyway, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna have that this weekend. I'll let you know how it is. Quick reminder, frozen veggies are totally fine on keto. Like, frozen veggies are great because they're flash frozen usually preserve a lot more stuff in them quite frankly so if you get that then you are putting yourself in a spot where you're saving money you're getting probably more nutritional value less oxidation less rancidity and it's going to keep longer too plus you can add it into smoothies or whatever it just frozen makes a lot of sense so don't be ashamed to buy frozen veggies especially if you're saving some cash oh this is new i haven't seen this enlightened fruit infusions what is this Strawberries, water, tapioca syrup, non-GMO, soluble corn fiber. Interesting. I mean, it's kind of a lot of extra stuff added in there. But that's kind of cool that you can get a fruit bar that doesn't have a bunch of sugar in it. So vegetable glycerin, it's only got four grams of sugar. Definitely not keto, but I wanted to point that out. That's pretty cool. Sounds like a helicopter's going in here. Oh, man. Got to get some of this. Check this out. Check out this keto ice cream. Okay. Peanut butter cookie dough, I love. I'm so getting that. And then, What? Red velvet, my wife's gonna lose her mind. Red velvet and butter, okay, I'm getting red velvet. That is so good. Gotta have some life every once in a while, right? I don't do that all the time, but gotta be real. Do you guys wanna see me do a separate whole food supplement video? Cause I think I should. I think it just, it's too much for this video. I could do like all the whole food supplements and talk about them. So just comment down below if you want me to do that. It's probably not enough really for this video or I'm sure too much for this video rather. Look at that, just let me know. Oh, I'm glad I walked right by this aisle again. Check this out. Some kimchi, spicy red. Ooh, yes. Kimchi, one of the best probiotic foods you could have. The fermented food, you don't want to eat much of it, but it is tremendous, not just because it's fermented and it's good for the gut, but when you're on keto, again, you want those cruciferous vegetables. You want that. That is not only, again, good for the gut, but also good for estrogen modulation, okay? So again, something very powerful. And I almost forgot another thing that I get a lot of. I like not only regular Greek yogurt, in moderation, but I really like coconut milk Greek yogurt, which I don't see a whole lot. Let's see, I'm gonna grab one of the 5% full fat Greek yogurts here. But then I'm also going to get, let's see, almond, let me look for coconut. I see almond yogurt. The only coconut yogurt I see is from So Delicious, which I think has some sugar, let's see. 
Yeah, that one's pretty high carb. Nine grams of carbs. Couldn't fly with that. Hmm. Coconut yogurt alternative. Here we go. 16. That's got a lot of sugar. Oh, it's not going to work. Okay. Maybe I will try. Nah, I'm just going to pass. I'm just going to stick with my regular yogurt this time. Whoa, back it up. I just saw something cool. What is this? Stonyfield now has... This is cool. 100% grass-fed Greek yogurt. Check this out. I've never seen this before. I might put back that Faya yogurt. Okay, we've got culture pasteurized grass-fed organic whole milk and then the wonderful cultures, including L. rhamnosus, which is the most researched probiotic strain in the world. Seven grams of carbs, a little bit high in carbs, but look at that protein content. Boom, I'm gonna try this. My wife likes the Faya. I'm still gonna get the Faya just in case. I don't wanna be in the doghouse. Guys, you know how it is. I think I've gotten enough stuff for today. I think I've already already have a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff. Thank goodness it's a business expense today, right? Ooh, I found something. It's kind of funny. The Smart Sweets, they kind of they kind of screw people over because they use a non-GMO IMO isomalta oligosaccharide, which is actually when I use my continuous glucose monitor, these are supposed to be like two grams of sugar, like no carb. When I have these, my continuous glucose monitor shows a huge spike. That's my own anecdotal evidence, right? I know there's been some scrutiny, but I think there's other brands that might be a little bit better using soluble corn fiber and stuff like that. I'm a little bit concerned with the, you know, all, just the IMO. So again, it's that isomalta oligosaccharides. It's called the IMO. Uh, check this brand out. Something different. It's not the same category. But these peanut butter cups, white chocolate peanut butter cups, kind of interesting. White chocolate, soluble corn fiber, non-GMO resistant dextrin, monk flute. They're using some interesting ways to basically create a low carb food um, by using things like resistant dextrin, so like a carbohydrate that doesn't digest. Uh, I actually have some, they sent me some, so I don't really need to buy any, but it's worth pointing out that Whole Foods has them, kind of interesting. Keto friendly gum. Also, uh, I don't know if I'd have it when you're fasting. People ask this question a lot, because the xylitol can break a fast and xylitol can cross through the blood brain barrier. So it might make you feel a little brain foggy, but I love their tagline, kick aspartame. It's kind of nice. Okay, let's check out. What do you think the price is going to be? What's the total? I don't want to bother you, but I want Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'm literally like filming a little snippet here for it. <laughs> no, I'm just trying not to get kicked out, man. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not kicked out. We were just looking at your video a little bit ago. Oh, awesome. Ooh, that's a nasty total. Yikes. But it is for a couple weeks. Definitely feel like I've got what I need for a little while. And you know what the cool thing is? As I left this store, the manager said, thank you for filming in our store. Okay, that I'm so stoked about. It takes me back to that very first show footage of that smart and final grocery haul where they ruthlessly kicked us out, made us feel like we were criminals. And since then, like I've always been nervous when we get kicked out. I gotta give some major props to Whole Foods, or at least this Whole Foods in South Lake Tahoe where they said, thank you for doing this video in our store. We love your content, it was awesome. Anyhow, I hope this helped you out, gave you a little bit of education as to what to get in terms of just a general haul, and I will see you tomorrow.